Hi, this is Adam Eliel Berkowitz. I'm here with a dear friend, Josh Wander. <laughs> Josh Wander is a really special guy. He's what I like to call doish. He's always doing something, and he's always doing something special and powerful. Um, if I started listing all the things he's involved in, I would never end. But most, especially, he lives here on the Mount of Olives. Uh, from his balcony, you can see the Temple Mount. Um, what, 200 yards away? Something like that. I don't know what a yard is, but sure. 200 meters. Okay. And um, so when the, when the redemption happens, when the final shofar is blown, he'll be hearing it from his living room. No, I'm not. <laughs> I'm going to be blowing it. Oh, he's going <laughs> to... And that's exactly the point of this. Josh has a project which um, is really spectacular. I have a scoop for you. Okay, he has a scoop for us. So what's the scoop? And then we'll talk about what we're holding. Just because you mentioned what you mentioned. There is an emergency uh, earthquake alert system in Israel. I just wrote about it yesterday. Do you know what it's called? It's called Teruwa. Okay, so it's not a scoop anymore. No, the scoop is that um, they just announced they have another early warning system for... Um, for earthquakes. So the final earthquakes, even the Israeli government is ramping up to deal with them. And here, we're here with the real Trua. So Josh, what is this spectacular, unbelievable glowing thing that I'm holding? Uh, these are a set of silver trumpets. Um, it is prescribed, biblically prescribed, that in times of war and in times of trouble, uh, these are to be blown. Uh, the Jewish people are meant to blow these, a minimum of two. And uh, that's part of their prayer service is blowing the silver trumpets. They are also used in the temple during sacrifices, but they're used outside the temple for other occasions. Like now, now you've got me worried because uh, when I told Josh I was coming over to look at the trumpets, he had them in his car in a really strong case as if he was getting ready to go on a road trip with the trumpets. And that's kind of... I'm returning from a road trip with the trumpets. Oh my gosh, what were you doing? I was in Nashville with Rabbi Tuli, ah. and uh, we blew trumpets there. Um, I was in at CPAC in Washington, D.C. Really? Um, we blew trumpets there. Uh, I was considering going down to Eagles Pass in Texas and blowing them by the border. But I didn't get around to it. And uh, slowly but surely, we're, we're getting around. And trumpets for Trump. We need to trumpets. trumpets for Trump. Well, actually, Trump was at both of the both in Nashville, and he was also in CPAC. So at the same place there. I'm wondering, I would love to ask him what he thought of the trumpets. This is, I'm, you know, I'm sitting here holding it like this. Yes, it's, you know, it's like, so it's a silver trumpet. But there's something very special about it that I'm I'm picking up just from holding it. It's It's not... It's just, it's, I'm holding it and it's like, I'm holding myself back from just running out to the balcony and blasting away. It's electrifying. It it's is. Not it really they're not electric trumpets. It's really, <clears throat> there's something about it that <clears throat> makes you want to jump into action. It's really... Uh, and, and we have blown them. Uh, we have blown them in Gaza. We have blown them. Have you really? I, yeah, blown I was them, afraid to ask. Um, in army bases around the country. And it also gives a lot of uh, encouragement to the, to the troops. Uh, because that's one of the things that the Torah states, is that when we go out to war, you blow these trumpets and you blow them again when you come back victorious. So this is a sign also that that God will be with us and will be victorious. In so this world. is the first time that Israel has gone out to war with silver trumpets since the times of the temple? Possibly. I mean, I, I, I never heard of trumpets being blown for the 73 war, for any of the, any of the incursions into Gaza before <clears> this. <throat> Trump, silver trumpets weren't are not readily available. They're very hard to make. We can discuss how they're yeah. manufactured, but they're, they're not easy to make. It took me a year to get them made. Really? Um, and then, and it, it, it quite an expense as well. <clears throat> so actually, when I've been going around to rabbis uh, around the country and discussing the trumpets, one of the questions that one of the rabbis posed to me was, 
you know, we've had the ability and we've had wars in, in our past. Why have we not done this in the past? The 1948 the Independence War, why don't sure. we? Sure. And my response was, I don't believe that we had the, the ability to, to do it then. We didn't have the trumpets. We didn't have the ability to make the trumpets. 1948, <clears throat> uh, we had a lot less uh, funds. We were less funded to, 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 to be able to purchase such a thing. We didn't have the silversmiths with the knowledge and skills necessary to make them. So um, today we're in a, we are technologically have advanced and we, uh, thank God, economically we've also advanced. So we're in a different position today than we were uh, 70, 80 years ago. I think there's also a thing, um, it, it, it shocks me how so many things connected with the Third Temple and with, with uh, bringing the redemption, it's just a matter of like, oh yeah, let's do that. You know, like uh, if you if you talk to people, we not only are we able to bring the Passover offering now, but there's a very strong side to say we're absolutely required to bring the Passover offering, and the only thing stopping us is, is government regulations. Um, a lot of this stuff is really a matter of Mila uh, Hashem Alai. Whoever wants to get on Hashem's team, just come on aboard. And do so. and you're a very Jewish guy, like well, I said. we actually have a flock of sheep and goats across the street that we purchased before every Passover, getting ready for the Paschal sacrifice. And uh, yeah, that's that we we're, we have, as you mentioned, we're getting many projects that we're working on. Yeah, jo- uh, that's that's the thing that amazes me about Josh. Like I said, he's very Jewish. He's just I, stop, stop tuning my trumpets. Listen, <laughs> <laughs> the the the. Fact is that this is the the project that I've focused on since the beginning of the war, the past four months. And I think that it's an opportune time. So when were these finished? No, I've had them for much longer than that. I know, I've seen you with these. But I've been gone into... Oh, to to, to, to blowing them in in significant places. Not only that, but bringing it, publicly bringing it to the the attention of of the the Jewish world, of the non-Jewish world. We have, uh, like I said, I've gone to dozens and dozens of uh, the, the chief rabbis of Israel. I actually have a letter from the chief rabbi of Israel from Rabbi Lau about them, and I, I, I've been going around speaking to all the rabbis about it. It's a subject which is not, most of, even the chief rabbis are not well versed in because it's something that has not been done in thousands of years. I'm aware of how that works. <laughs> so, so introducing the rabbis to this, to this subject and, and discussing with them, going back and forth and discussing I am happy to discuss the you know tell, tell you about what what the, what the back and forth is the the two first <clears throat> I would say the main questions that are asked um, off the bat are a how do we know what they look like and b how do we know when they're used um, how they looked I I tell them my standard answer is that it's irrelevant um, that's because we don't find anywhere in any Torah sources that it states specific requirements as far as what it looks like or how the, the length of them or anything like that. The only two requirements are mentioned directly in the Torah, which is that it has to be pure silver. Mm. And that often leads to another discussion as to what does pure silver mean. Uh, in temple times, it could be that pure silver meant something different than pure silver today. Um, for example, these trumpets are sterling silver. They're about 92 and a half percent silver. In temple times, most likely that's what they were they were making. Uh, today we have the opportunity, we have the skill and <clears throat> knowledge to make uh, silver pure to 0.9999. Uh, so that's another question as to whether it goes by what it was in the in ancient times or whether we go by the purity that we're able to achieve in, in modern day, in modern times. Although there were, I don't know, people are going to, people that know numismatics will know that uh, there are Athenian owls that were Points that were minted at much higher purity, but that's, a, that's another discussion. Uh, and then the second thing the Torah says is that it has to be miksha. Miksha um, is translated generally as as one piece. As, well, also as beaten. That's another another explanation. So so there are two different ver- explanations of what what miksha can mean. One is that it can be one solid piece. As you can see, I actually added a piece onto mine, so mine is not one. It was originally one solid piece, and then I added this this add, add addition to it. Mm-hmm. We'll, talk, we'll talk about why I did that in a second. Um, because I actually follow the second uh, opinion, which is that it means that not to use recycled silver. 
right? It's, oh. it's, it, like the commentary said that you, it's it's not considered respectful to use take pieces of, of silver that were used for other things and beat them beat them down and recycle them into into make this. You should use freshly minted uh, or mined uh, silver, and uh, so. That that's that's they're two different opinions. So again, I'll, the rabbis discuss all these different things, and and I I have these discussions back and forth with the rabbis of what what it means to have the chutzot throats, what it means to have the trumpets, when they should be used, how they should be used, whether it's even applicable today. Okay. There are six hundred and thirteen commandments in the Torah. Um, unbeknownst to most even Orthodox Jews, the majority of those are not fulfilled today. Um, correct. If you speak to most Orthodox Jews around the world, they'll say, of course, we, 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 we do all the 613 commandments. Uh, but many of those are not done today for a mul- multitude of reasons. First of all, one third of those commandments can only be performed here in the land of Israel. Correct. So if you're living outside of the land of Israel, then you're already missing a third of the, of the commandments. There are many commandments that apply specifically to the temple which we do, don't yet have. So therefore, there are many commandments that are not able to be uh, fulfilled. There are other commandments that apply to specific people. So there are commandments that are only given to a Kohen or to a Levite, or either, depending on, you know. And then there are commandments that we prefer not to do. Um, for example, we have a commandment to divorce our wives. Um, most people choose not to do that, and we shouldn't run out to do it just because it's a just right. because it's a if, <laughs> if one needs to divorce the wife, then it's a commandment to do so. But it's not, it's not something that we we prefer to do. We prefer not to do that. So there are different types, and then 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 there are commandments um, that have been forgotten. What I call the forgotten commandments, the the, the neglected ones over two thousand years of exile. There are many commandments which we just have lost track of. Most recently, um, there have been two that, I, that, I, that have been made the headlines. Maybe more, but at least two. The first is that approximately two generations ago, at least in North America, um, the commandment of shatnez, of the not allowing, a violation of, of wearing a garment which is a combination of wool and linen, was completely forgotten to the Jewish people. Meaning people learned about it when they, those that were learned and, and studied knew about this commandment, but no one took it as a practical commandment that you should go and check your clothing for, for shatnets. There was a rabbi in New York named Rabbi Yosef Rosenberger, and he took it upon himself. He opened a, a shatnets laboratory in Williamsburg, like the Williamsburg, Williamsburg neighborhood of, uh, of New York. And he took it upon himself to go around the United States speaking about this mitzvah of Shatnez, speaking to the rabbis, speaking to the, to the communities, and he literally restored this commandment to the Jewish people, and today it's, it's recognized amongst Orthodox Jews that you have to check any, any wool uh, garments or linen garments that make sure it doesn't have any of this mixture mm-hmm. in it. Um, so it was forgotten. So it was forgotten. He restored it. Um, likewise, more recently, the, the commandment of Tchelet, of wearing blue, the blue dye strings, very good. Have those two. Um, the blue stripe that lies strings on, on your four quarter garments was something that, again, people may have learned about, but it wasn't considered to be practical, right. something practical, until the Rezina Rebbe came around, and then Reb Herzog, and then most recently the group in Efrat, uh, Dr. Sturman and our Greenspan, they came around and they, they uh, restored this mitzvah to the Jewish people. Uh, within that category are the trumpets. The trumpets are something that anybody who studies the Torah reads about them, but it was never considered to be, at least for the past few thousand years, to be something practical. And that is something in the past four months, since the beginning of the war on Simchat Torah, October 7th, that I have taken upon myself to try to restore to the Jewish people. We're in the process now of, of, of uh, writing a book on the subject. Um, we, we have launched a, a website on the subject. And um, and here they are. We were going around all around the country, blowing. So I want to point out. I want to point out that you're going through a process in a very specific and proper way, which is um, really, I think, to sanctify God's name, which begins in the Bible with the commandments, goes to 
researching the study and the sources that we have about it that stretch back to the sages and the Talmud and the Bible and commentaries on the Bible. Um, and then from there, you jump into the practical. <clears throat> How do you I, I, would just, I would just add another piece to that puzzle, which is um, historical and archaeological. Ah, absolutely. Right. Archaeology, you were mentioning Tchelet. They have discovered ancient Tchelet. They even discovered ancient Tchelet factories where they found the, the crushed snail, so they knew which snail it was. So yes, the archaeology um, is not just um, to, to verify and confirm um, what we're doing. It's also, uh, it's also part of the process of how we got to where, what, what we're doing now. Um, so first of all, I want, I want to have uh, put up the, the, the links that, to this so that people can see it and see that it's real. Um, I mean, ultimately, uh, this is for the service in the temple, um, but not only. So for the things that it's not temple-oriented, things that are temple-oriented for these trumpets, we can't do right now um, for various reasons, mostly having to do with government restrictions. But for the, the, the non-temple <coughs> use of this, you've already started, which is quite spectacular. Um, going out to war with a silver trumpet, is that's an army of God. That's really, that's quite powerful. Um, there, were, there were certain rabbis... Uh, Rabbi Eli Yoshif here in, in Jerusalem that uh, believed that the silver trumpets, let me take a step back again. <clears throat> Rabbis throughout the generations have struggled with the question, why are we not performing this commandment? Uh, the Moged Avram, many people have, have, have written about it, you know, this doesn't make sense. It, it, the, the Rambam Maimonides clearly states that this is a commandment. If it's commandment and it's not that difficult to perform, then why aren't we doing it? And many of the rabbis have <clears throat> have left this question open-ended because they, they don't have an answer for why we're not doing it. The most famously, the, the Chavetz Chaim in his Mishnah Bura, <clears throat> who lived in Poland in Radin uh, about a century ago, so he asked the question and. He says, perhaps it's because we're not in the land of Israel. And even if we were in the land of Israel, we don't have a Jewish government. That is, again, he's writing this a century ago, before the, the state was, was created, the modern state of Israel. So he says, today, obviously, we have a, 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 with the Jewish people are back in Israel. We have a Jewish government. So that those are no longer excuses. But you could, and, and the Jewish army. But, but there's a theme of rabbis throughout the generations that are trying, in, in, this is my opinion again, that are trying to justify why we're not performing this commandment today. I'll give another example. In America, the chief rabbi of America, Rabbi Moshe Feinstein, was asked in his first uh, volume of his response uh, this question of why we're not blowing the silver trumpets. And his response is, a unique one, and again, and I, I believe it stems from the same root, which is that, that he's trying to justify and explain what, you know, we're not doing it, there must be a reason why we're not doing it, so let's find a, find a reason, let's find, let's try to uh, judge favorably the Jewish people and explain why we're not doing this commandment today. And he comes up with a conclusion which is generally not accepted, and it, it's, it's a, he, he finds an obscure source that says that the trumpets that are blown are the same exact trumpets that are in the temple, and therefore, since we don't have the, that specific uh -huh. set of trumpets, so therefore we're not able to blow today. Rabbi Yashiv, as I mentioned, also says something similar here in Jerusalem, and said that in order to, you could manufacture and have trumpets, they fulfill the commandment of trumpets today, but in order to do so, you have to sanctify the trumpets to be used in the temple, which these are not. And, and therefore, and we, we shy away today from sanctifying things because there's other issues with doing so. So therefore, we shouldn't we shouldn't go there. Um, this again is a, is a, a a reoccurring theme amongst the rabbis that I found that uh, that try to judge favorably why we're not doing them, why their forefathers, their ancestors, their rabbis, their their teachers, 
have not done so, and uh, and therefore we're not doing it today. Um, it, it, it's 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 again it, it's something that I'm discussing constantly with the rabbis. Why today is different than it was in former generations, and why we're in a unique position Even today. Even former generations, right? So we're, we're we're in a unique position today where we're able to f- fulfill this commandment, and we should be fulfilling the commandment. And uh, and it opens up a lot of discussions amongst amongst the rabbinic world. I, I want to point out this. This sounds like a very technical um, narrative, and it is. Um, I didn't even start getting. I know, <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is, this is real, and it's based in the Torah. It's based in uh, Jewish sources, and it's not. If I wanted to do a thirty-second TikTok about, oh, look at the silver trumpet, I could do that, but that's not what we're doing here. When you want to bring, when you want to do a serious process, you have to present it seriously, and you have to do the work. And Josh has absolutely done the work, and he and. I'm not claiming to be a scholar, and I'm not even claiming to be able to understand the scholars, but I can kind of follow it. Um, and so it's very important to relate to the serious issues and not just make a silver trumpet. You know, there are a lot of people out there who, metal workers, who can make a silver trumpet, but it's not going to be a temple silver trumpet. It's not going to be the kind of silver trumpet that was described in the Bible, and it will not achieve the same, same uh, purposes. So, so, so maybe going into the rabbinic response is going over the heads of most, most of your viewers. But let me just take it back a little bit to, to the, what you mentioned, historic art slash archaeological proofs. And this is a theory that I have. I have no way of, uh, of proving it. But um, if you look at the Arch of Titus, yeah. um, you'll see there is a depiction of the temple vessels that were, that were taken by the Romans after the destruction of the Second Temple, and they were brought to Rome. And amongst those are a set of silver trumpets, two, two trumpets that are, that are crossed, and uh, they're huge, they're very, very long. Maybe we could show a picture of them if you want to edit that in. Um, very long silver trumpets. Yeah. On the other hand, just a few years later, after the destruction of the Temple, um, there was a rebellion of Bar Kokhba, and they minted coins, which also had a depiction of silver trumpets of the Chazat Srot, but they're much shorter. They're closer to what we're holding right now. My theory is that in the temple, because we know that it was also the trumpets were used during the sacrifices we mentioned earlier um, in the temple, they had these very, very long ones, but they also had a smaller mobile kit uh, set like this one, that was taken out to war and was taken out of the temple for different occasions that they needed to blow them outside of the temple. So these ones, I, I think there were two separate cassettes. One was a, a temple set and one was a mobile also, again, my speculation. Also, if I'm not mistaken, um, I think it explicitly says in the Mishnah that there were, there were times when you blew uh, trumpets and shofar together. And there was, a, there was an order of which began and which finished. So there was a lot of music, powerful music going on in the temple um, and around the temple. Um, and this would certainly have been part of it. So you did something very interesting, which I would that not... That was only done in the temple. Right. The, the mixture of, of trumpets and the shofar is only done in the temples. Outside of the temple, so you, you can't do that. did something which I thought was very uncharacteristic of you because you're not a, a flashy kind of guy who just wants to, you know, shock effect. Um, you're, you're, as I know you, you're a very thoughtful person um, and think through what you're doing. So the fact that you took it to CPAC and to um, Nashville, to the um, NRB conference, uh, I hear in that that Josh Wander saw a great deal of significance there. Uh, I was asked. Oh, you were asked. You were invited. To them. Um, otherwise, I probably would not have. I, I, uh, I don't necessarily see a significance other than, again, the goal, the, the, the ultimate goal here is trying to restore commandment and, and getting the, the, the message out to the world is very important. Yes. Um, from out of Zion, we'll go teaching. So, uh, so definitely, you know, just, just spreading the word, word is something which is which is uh, advantageous for, for the project. So blowing for the IDF, were you invited or did you proactively jump on that? I was a, a, a reservist in the IDF, um, so I was I was inside 
uh, embedded at the time. So I was there. I was I was blowing. I, I was not invited. I was actually thrown out once by a group of really? uh, of, of army rabbis. Um, the rabbis. I was going to say all oh, the secular guys. No, the rabbis. Yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> I thought this is it. And I was actually shocked because um, right, I, because I had this 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 very quick discussion with them, where I where I said you know this is this is a commandment in the, in the Torah, and they said there's a lot of commandments we don't fulfill. Ooh. And, and I said, well, I'm sorry to hear that. You know, coming from a, an army rabbi, that, that you should be. I hope that you fulfill all the command all the commandments you're able and able to fulfill. So um, so if Donald Trump gets elected, go. If God, God willing, if God, Donald Trump gets elected, and he invites you to his... If Biden gets elected, it's also God willing. Yes, if Biden gets... But I wouldn't say that as loudly, because it's, <laughs> I, can't, I can't get behind it as much. But just... God's behind it all. Let's take exactly. one of the possibilities, right. okay? One of the possible uh, uh, scenarios that Donald Trump gets elected, and he invites you... You know, I'm, I'm a big fan of, of President Biden. Are you really? Yeah. I think he's the Aliyah candidate. <laughs> he's the one when he gets elected, all the Jews all in the America Jews are going to leave and they're, they're going to come running here. Sure, I can see that. <laughs> um, um, Donald Trump did want to stay in America and complain. Right. Um, so the question is if he invites you to come to the Oval Office? With no, what's the, I, 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 I want to <laughs> say coronation, but that would be a horrible choice of words. He wants to do what? Inauguration. Inauguration, that's the word. Um, to blow tr silver trumpets, would you do that? I'd consider it. I'd, I'd definitely wow. Consider it. Wow. And if anyone thinks about it, it has to be temple trumpets. The, the real deal and not not what you think it might be. If, if this they, is the real they, deal. There, I'm sure some, perhaps some of your viewers. I, I know that we have uh, we have some of the, our viewership that are uh, members of Trump's. Uh, what is it called? The uh, the religious um, inner sanctum. Oh, the uh, the, 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 the the religious council. Yeah. Yeah, the, the, the uh, Paul faith, faith, faith yeah. Based, uh, whatever. I, I don't know what I forget what yeah. it's called. But if, if they his, his minion, yeah, his minion. If, if they if they want to, to to invite me, like and, I said, if, and, and I could definitely see this becoming a thing at at uh, Israeli inaugurations. But I don't think Israel has inaugurations. We don't. We don't do that. We just fight. We just fight. I mean, because what are you going to do? Have an inauguration every six months? It's going to be all right. <laughs> uh, yeah, for having an inauguration, but, but there will be a coronation for my. For my for <laughs> <laughs> yes, there will be God willing very soon. Wow, um, can we go out on the balcony and blow the blow the horn? Um, I'm not sure that's a good idea. Okay, uh, the reason is because we're at wartime, right? And you're going to spook a lot of people in the community. If you start there playing. is, there is <laughs> that. Um, by the way, I hope to be bringing you a video of me going up to the Temple Mount during Ramadan. I do. Um, I do blow them every Friday. Do you? Before, oh, before the Sabbath. There's we, a we there's blow. a long history, even in the exile, um, of Jewish communities blowing the shofar just before the Sabbath to let people know to to, to get their. Uh, so if you want to come back right before the Sabbath, or, or you can, we, I can send you a picture. You can send me a picture and a video of you blowing it before before Shabbat. That would be an amazing thing. Anyway, I think uh, I think we'll leave the leave this. Uh, uh, just to, 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 I just remembered that Mogen David Adom, which is the equivalent of the Red Cross here, um, changed their siren. You were aware of this, right? No, I wasn't. Oh. So the 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 siren, the normal siren on the ambulances that they have is very similar to an air raid siren. And during war, mm. people get spooked when they hear it, that people think sure. that, that maybe that's an air raid siren and they run into their shelters. So they actually changed it to the, like the British, ooh, 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 if you listen to the ambulances. Oh, um, they changed, during wartime, they changed the, the siren. To the I, li I live way out of the center of the, yeah. of the country. So Josh, I can't thank you enough. Uh, are you planning on making more? So we have uh, actually found this, this, Set took me almost a year to make, like I said. And I can't very, imagine how much it costs. Um, but we have tried, we're trying out to streamline that process in order to make a lot more. 
Um, sure, you need them. And like I said, we're, we're also at the same time trying to publicize and uh, teach people, educate the, the masses about it. And that's why we have the book and the, the website, and we're going around speaking, speaking tours. Um, I think that soon we will have a streamlined uh, process, which will hopefully bring down the price a little bit and also uh, make it that it, and it'll I think take a, should a just, lot shorter I think period people time. should just know about it and, know, and not just know, oh, Silver Trumpets, there's a lot more to know about it. Um, so I'll be putting, I, I got only the links on the video and, uh, are we, are we ready to, uh, say goodbye and go out and see if we can start blowing? <laughs> Thank God. Thank you so much, Josh. God willing, um, we're going to be seeing more of these, um, and we're going to be hearing more of these, God willing. Thank you so much. Be blessed. Be blessed, y'all. Thank you. From the Mount of Olives, we're with Josh Wander. Be blessed.